where we need to be. It begins like this, O Lord and Master of my life. If you were to just pause there, it's not a title. Like when you say it, you're not just giving Him a title. It's actually an affection of the heart. You're confessing and honoring Him as the Lord and Master of your life. Remember, we want to be like Christ. This is critical, O Master of my life. He won't be if the rest of this is not true. We say, take from me the spirit of sloth, despair, lust of power, and idle talk. But give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant. Yes, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own transgressions and not to judge my brothers, for blessed art thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. There are five gateway sins. There are five little foxes in this prayer that we're asking God to help us overcome. And this is critical, and we're in the perfect time to do it. The spirit of sloth, despair, lust of power, and idle talk. In these lies the great potential for sin. So let's talk about sloth. Someone said that sloth poisons the resources for spiritual energy. Sloth poisons the resources for spiritual energy. Your resources are prayer and the Bible and fasting and sloth poisons those and it totally makes sense. I want to ask you, when was the last time you went to your father of confession and said, I was lazy? We probably are not confessing our laziness. And ultimately, it's the laziness that's dragging us down. We were at a retreat when I was like in college, and Abuna said, everyone write three things, you know, three sins or whatever, and just anonymously, and like I would say 90% of them, one of the three things that people put was laziness. Are we spiritually slothful? Do we postpone praying and say half-heartedly, I'll do it later? You tell yourself and God, I'll do it later. Do you avoid fasting because it's unpleasant? Do you delay reading your Bible? If you let sloth rule your actions, then God cannot be Lord and Master of your life. I'm going to say that sloth is not just doing nothing. And I want you to pay attention. Sloth is not doing nothing. Sloth is doing nothing good. Watching TV is not doing nothing. Watching TV is filling your mind with something that sucks the life out of you. You know, laying in bed awake, believe it or not, is not doing nothing. Laying in bed awake is one of the greatest times when your thoughts are about your comfort and your joy and sometimes it goes from there from one thing to another to sin and the priests say don't just lie in bed thinking about things because ultimately it will lead you to sin so Lent is the time to not be slothful it's a time to cut out those activities that lead to the laziness, replace them with good things, spiritual readings, liturgies, prayers, and good deeds. We're supposed to be reading the Bible, or at least the New Testament, in a year. We're already 60 days out. Hopefully, in the month of February, when we started, that you would have finished the Gospel of Matthew Today, how close are you? Or are we being slothful? And it is this something we need to get rid of for us to get closer to Christ. Number two is despair. Now, spirit of sloth and then despair. Despair is the feeling of hopelessness. Uh, that some things are even too great for God. It's a time where you feel like you're never going to be a saint. 
and your, sin, your sins make you feel so guilty that you wonder if it's even worth it for me to make the effort. That's what Satan wants you to think. After any sin, whatever it is, he wants you to feel you're so bad that there's no hope. I mean, it's a horrible thing. Those are the kind of things that lead to that lead to suicide, physically and spiritually. It is never acceptable. I found this quote on despair. Our wickedness shall not overpower the unspeakable goodness and mercy of God. I want to say that again. Our wickedness shall not overpower the unspeakable goodness and mercy of God. Our dullness shall not overpower God's wisdom, nor our infirmity God's omnipotence. God has unspeakable goodness and mercy and power and omnipotence. There is nothing that He is not able to treat or heal or fix. No one He is not willing to accept. There's nothing He cannot do. Despair is something that everyone needs to get rid of. St. Isaac the Syrian, he had this quote, he says, despair, sorry, our sins is almost like, he talks about like a fountain coming out of the earth, like, a, like one of those big gushers like at Yosemite or Yellowstone. And he says, it's like throwing, putting your hand over it. You cannot possibly extinguish it. He says, your sins are like your hand trying to cover this huge gusher of God's mercy. You just can't distinguish it. There's no reason to despair. And if you are to despair, it's as if, almost like blasphemy, as if you're saying, God, I really don't think you are strong enough. Lust of power. Now, sloth and dependency will fill our lives with lust of power. Now, this is not political power. It's actually an attitude towards life that makes life meaningless and empty. And they force us to seek a type of compensation. It's a wrong attitude towards other people. This um, lust for power, it's, uh, it happens where your life ends up not being oriented towards God and it ends up becoming very selfish and self-centered. And that you kind of want other people to kind of become the means of your own self-satisfaction. If God is not the Lord and Master of my life, then I become my own Lord and Master. I become the center of my own world. And I begin to evaluate everything in terms of my needs, my ideas, my desires, and my judgments. And so I wonder... How many of us just want everyone around us to do something that would make me happy? And if you think about it, that is kind of putting them into subordination. There's no way that that's what Christ was doing. He actually went to the cross to make us happy. And number four is idle talk. Idle talk is always a place for sin. You run out of things to talk about with your friend. The topic goes to others. You look for something to laugh about. You look for somebody to mock. It turns into gossip. It turns sour all the time. The fathers say that spiritual talk is silver. Silence is golden. AMC did not come up with that. That was the fathers. <laughs> Silence is better than even spiritual talk, because even spiritual talk could lead to pride. St. Arsenios has this saying, he has a lot of sayings about speaking. He says, I regretted speaking many times, but never once being silent. How many of you can say that holds so true for me? The more you talk, the greater chance you have of drawing yourself away from God. Then there's the opposite spectrum. Uh, there's a story in the Paradise of the Fathers where the monks are like sitting and eating and there's one monk who like won't talk to anyone. And they would talk to him and they say, how come you never talk to us? And he says, I can't speak to God and man at the same time. See, the more you're speaking to others, clearly it's the less that you're speaking to God. 
our goal is to be like him and to be with him. Then he prays for positive things, chastity, humility, patience. And then I wanted to go to the last verse. Where he says, help me to see my own errors and not judge my brother. Nothing, I won't say nothing. One of the greatest hindrances in growth in a spiritual life is looking at the sins of others. St. Maximus says this, He who busies himself with the sins of others or judges his brother on suspicion has yet not even begun to repent or to examine himself so as to discover his own sins. He's saying if you have time to look at the sins of others, you clearly have not begun to look at yourself. The fathers say that we should see our sins as the sands of the sea. We talk about our sins and we say, but your mercies, O God, are like the drops of rain. Or as the sands of the sea are our sins, His mercy and forgiveness are like the drops of the ocean. But we are supposed to focus on our sins. There's no way you'll ever become like Christ when you're constantly trying to tear down someone else. Because what it does inside of you, it just creates this Anger, jealousy, pride, envy. It just leads to so many other things. And judging others is a whole topic in itself. But I guess what I wanted us to do is to focus on the small sins. The gateway sins. Slothfulness. Idle talk. Despair. Lust for power. Or wanting people to serve my needs. And judging others. This prayer of St. Ephraim, pray it every day. Once a day, twice a day, three times a day, with matanyas, with prostrations. Before the prayer and after each line, offer this in the most sincerest of humility. Repentance is not talk, it's not feeling. Repentance is action. If we're ever going to reach the stages of illumination and sanctification, we have to go through purification. We have to work on getting rid of the sins. No one will ever say you are like Christ when you have so much evil that is within you. I pray this for myself and for all of us. And pray this for your family. Pray this for all that you know. Um, let's stand up and pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our dear Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself, you loved us to the very end. I thank you so much for this great calling to be like you. It seems like a dream. It seems like it's so far beyond us. But it seems like we've never been directed towards the right path. I pray, dear Lord, actually maybe I've just ignored the right path. Help me, O oh Lord, by your grace and by your spirit. Because I know there's no way that I could do any of this by myself. I pray, dear Lord, that you would work a work in each and every one of us. That you thoroughly search our inner parts, search our hearts. I pray, dear Lord, that you shed a light on every small sin that is slowly eating away and ripping us from you and changing our image into something which is ugly that we cannot stand. I pray, dear Lord, that you would expose our weaknesses. Help us, O oh Lord. To be so sensitive to even the smallest offense towards you, dear Lord, that we will be drawn in tears for the time that we offend you in even the slightest way. We pray, dear Lord, that our hearts would be more and more connected to you. We pray, dear Lord, that we would be able to one day say that nothing would ever separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. I pray, dear Lord, that you would begin to purify us by your Holy Spirit. Give us true understanding. Give us a zeal and a desire, dear Lord to really move towards you and to become like you. 
I thank you for this time of Lent. It is not a burden, it is a gift. I pray, dear Lord, let me not throw away the gift or set it aside, but let me use it. Let me not abuse it. Let me, O oh Lord, take it to be purified by you, with you, and for you. I pray for this group. I pray for the process that you have begun, that you would complete it until that final day. Through the intercession of St. Mary and all the saints who have been purified, sanctified, and illumined before us, hear us when we are children, cry unto you with repentant hearts, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one through Christ Jesus our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One last time I'm going to remind you. You have two things to do, three things. Pray the, saint, the prayer of St. Ephraim, the Lenten prayer. You have the card. Put it in your prayer book, your Bible. Pray it every day. Number two, look at the list, the comparison, the spectrum of Christ's thoughts and your thoughts. Find out where you lie. Find something to repent about. And the third thing is, look up the lament for sin by St. Basil the Great. Pray it once. Just read it once this week. Just once. Have an amazing week. I have one more.